Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Historic Preservation Commission's regular meeting on Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. Um, has everyone, uh, let's see, I think we'll start with uh, roll, call. roll call. Lauren Fleck. Here. Chris Jenkins. Here. Lester Labone. Here. Mike Badone. Here. Rich Ballard. Here. Jim Nelson. Here. Billy Wentz. Here. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of our last meeting on March 17th? If there's any questions or revisions, otherwise could we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Second. We'll call Jim. Laura? Approved. Chris? Yes. Lester? Yes. Mike? Yes. Rich? Yes. Jim? Yes. Billy? Yes. First item that we have on today's agenda is the memorandum of agreement for the new method laundry uh, building. Uh, we received a copy of that. Everyone have a copy of that and a chance to read through it. And uh, any comments or questions that uh, we could address? Or do you have anything you'd like to add to this, Rick? Or uh, no, it was just slightly reworded by our attorneys, but it didn't change the content of it. They just wanted to refine the language of the whereas clauses, I believe. That's all that they did. So everything else should be materially the same in terms of the prep of the wall. Um, and I didn't, I didn't see anything else that struck me as being different. Um, I was surprised because when Ryan and I had a conversation with the director of state preservation office, she said the agreement had to go to Washington for signature and they signed it within two hours of receiving it. So um, SHPO has signed it. I have that copy here if that's not the one you have and it will be for signature here if authorized today and then go to council the next council meeting, which will be, I don't remember the date, 6th, uh, for their authorization and signature, and the EPA will sign it immediately when they get it back. So. Just a side question, uh, the last storm that we have, any indication there was more damage as a result of the heavy yeah. storm? Yeah, um, I, I hadn't gone into it. Leo went into it several times, Leo and Kathy did. Uh, one of the main beams that was in there that it was twisting more and becoming more of a problem, so they shorted up. Uh, the city shorted up, put some column, put a column in there, to two couple of columns in there to short up. Uh, but yeah, there's more damage in the front side of the building. There's more water coming into the front um, in the what probably were bedrooms upstairs, those rooms in the front of the building. Uh, so there's more damage up there, water damage from intrusion, I guess you could say, in there. The other side of the other thing we're still waiting for is we need to get a sign off, a clearance on the on the asbestos abatement. The contractor that did the abatement can't do the sign off. Unfortunately, the contractor who tested initially tested um, the person who would be the one who could give us a clearance is no longer working with that company and no longer qualified to give the clearance. So now we are looking for a contractor to come in and give the clearance on the asbestos abatement. So that might hold us up a little bit. I don't know. Um, we're, Stantec is reaching out to another party to see if they can do the clearance for us. But um, asbestos abatement is quite the interesting beast because you can't just go in and say, yep, it's gone, unfortunately. So, not really related to the MOA, but just another step in the process. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> I have a couple. Um, in our last commission meeting or two, we had talked about taking some steps to document the stone that's behind that stucco, <clears throat> and that doesn't find its way into the MOA. What, how do we, um, what's going to happen with that? The contractor that's been awarded the work has already agreed to take the facade off first. Not first, but take it down, take the stucco down so it could be documented. So he's agreed to take down. all of the stucco off? 
As, as I understand it, I, I wasn't involved with the ward in the contract, but I, as I understand it, they okay. included that in. We talked about it to some extent at the, at the uh, pre-bid meeting, uh, and he worked that into his price. And then how much time is allotted to allow the, the stone to be documented after that? That I off? don't have an answer for. And who will document it? I'm assuming it would be somebody in the Historic Preservation Commission. Are it, you pointing at yourself, Lisa? More than likely, it'll probably be somebody on uh, city staff and in conjunction with uh, volunteers and if anybody from the commission would be interested in participating in that and helping to document, um, that would be great. Okay, as long as we are kept up to date as to the progress on time evolution. Yeah. And one of my concerns is, as, as you brought up a meeting or two ago, Chris, was that uh, when the opera was torn down, it became a parking lot and it stayed a parking lot for <coughs> decades. <coughs> Pardon me? Uh, when the opera building was torn down, it became a parking lot and has been a parking lot for decades. Yes. And I would hate to see that become the fate of this building. I know there's intentions to develop it, but it could be a long time before anybody wants to do something with that space. And uh, because of that, I, it is going to be a gaping hole on a piece of the historic fabric of the city. And I'm wondering if it's possible that after work gets going, if we could look at getting a price to just leaving the stone in place with its existing columns and designing a lateral support system behind the stone just to maintain the appearance of that until it is redeveloped. And, and can we get a, a price on that and consider it as a change order to the contract? As if, I don't know what that price would be, but I understand some money was moved from one project to another to make this happen, and I'm just wondering if a little more could be moved and allow that what is probably going to be a beautiful stone wall to be preserved until someone does redevelop the place. That's way above my pay grade. Um, that would have to be a council decision. The other contributing factors that we don't know yet is um, whether the drill rig that's needed to evaluate can get in through the back or through the front and whether they can get the machinery out through the back as they plan to or not. There's still some questions about whether, whether that, that wall, whether the facade absolutely needs to come down or not need to come down. Uh, the other side of that coin is if it gets in the way of doing the assessment, EPA would not support extending this out any further because okay. they have timelines on their money as well. Well, they I guess I'll spend their money by September. I'll throw it to the commission. Do we have an interest in trying to do more with that existing wall and preserving it than is presently being considered? I, I would say once, once it's exposed, it, it's hard to say what condition it's really in, whether it would be <clears throat> something easy to do. I, I, I think if it was exposed and it, it was obvious that it could easily be saved without a lot of work. I, I think it'd be worth pursuing, but um, we definitely don't want it slowing down the process. Or well, is there some way we could keep the uh, the issue alive until before it's de demolished and have a chance to reconsider what to do with that wall once the stucco's off? I mean, would that make sense to not kill that poor wall just yet? So um, I'd have to go back and look at it again, but just to take the pragmatic view of it. If parking lot is what it's going to be, um, vehicle traffic in and out of the front of the building is maybe not uh, something that is practical. Uh, so leaving the facade may um, limit the city's use of that lot without taking all of the traffic into the, the subsequent neighborhood to the north which I think is less desirable uh, than, than coming off of traffic coming in and off of Main Street. So I think that would also have to be a consideration. Uh, certainly you would save the wall and take out all the storefront and take out all of the windows and allow the access. But um, I think during the day, it's a great idea. At night, it's maybe less desirable. Um, again, for its parking use and the lighting. And I think we've got to also look at uh, you know how it affects um, surrounding neighborhood because just a half block off that we're residential again so I think that should be part of the conversation I think that's a, a relevant thought but I also think that access off the alley would be possible 
Um, and you could have a sign over by the uh, uh, clock tower plaza uh, parking and directing people that way and then uh, get access from the alley to both, both parking lots. Wouldn't disturb the neighborhood. And I was thinking uh, your, your comment about vehicle access, you could remove part of the wall if you needed some more headroom and a, and a lane width, <coughs> maybe on a 20 foot wide or wherever two vehicles is. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not discounting that. I'm just saying that that needs to be part of the okay. conversation. But I, having discussed this, it seems like maybe there's some interest in keeping this topic alive and asking the city council to maybe keep it alive with a potential change order and potential design. I think that should be included, Lauren, I honestly do, and, and that's something we should approach the city. I don't want to delay uh, proceeding with this, but I, the time I walk through it, they're going to be coming and going from the back. I have no doubt about that. They're going to probably work from the back towards the front. Uh, if there's potential to save that, and, and there's a big if as to whether or not it's worth saving, and I think that's why we discussed removing the stucco to begin with, is uh, you know, document it one, but also save it if it's worth saving. Um, I guess the question is, is how do we proceed with this without slowing the city down on this process, and at the same time being able to take a few steps to reconsider if it's worth saving. Yeah. Just keep it on our agenda. We keep it on our agenda. Um, Amy? Sorry for being a few minutes late. From my perspective as a city council person, I would think that maybe this body might want to have a, a, an official motion um, in the record if, if it is the will of this body that city council consider something along those lines. And I would think you would both want um, the city to get a cost estimate um, so that you know kind of when the, the stucco comes off, you already know how much it would cost, so you're not looking at delaying the process to get that cost estimate. Um, and then perhaps if, the, if this body does want city council to consider potentially moving front funds from the Clock Tower Plaza to um, new method historic, preservation, historic facade preservation, um, that, that that is part of that same motion contingent upon the historical documentation review to see whether or not it would be appropriate. That would be, those would be my thoughts as your, your city council liaison. What she said. <laughs> Are you gonna put that in the form of motion? <laughs> Actually, uh, I think what we need to discuss is uh, we, we don't necessarily want to delay your process, the city's process, in, in removing what's dangerous and at the same time including some <coughs> verbiage and asking the city to consider uh, what options there are to save that facade if it's worth saving. Um, that's my feelings. Uh, how's everyone else? How, how do we do that? I, I think, uh, just as Amy mentioned, that we make it in the, in the form of a motion that, uh, uh, that we are requesting that the city uh, consider um, setting some funds aside to possibly save that facade um, once the stucco is removed and we can evaluate whether or not it's worth saving. Uh, and at the same time, still move forward with the Miranda, uh, memorandum of agreement uh, for the, uh, you know, the de demolition of the building. But I, I think we have to have something added to uh, what the city brings in front of it, uh, in front of its council to uh, include that, Lauren. I think otherwise it'll. That was one question I had. Since this subject is not addressed in the MOU, <coughs> <laughs> Plugging in our discussions at the moment is uh, going to be a little interesting. I mean, our discussions at the moment are not covered in the MOU as it is in front of us. You know, it's the apples and oranges there. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with that? You know, what is the impact of your discussions on that MOU as it's prevent presented right now? If I can comment on that, um, the MOU is is looked at is created in terms of the only thing being historic that being that east wall um, it's not the building itself was not considered by shippo to be historic 
so I think in terms of, of an MOU versus um, whether that wall stays, and I've got another thought about that, I think you're talking about two different things. Exactly. Because we're not, the State Historic Preservation Office didn't care about the facade of the building. That's your desire as a committee to talk about that. So I think you're talking about approval of an MOA and then whether you talk, whether the commission talks to the city council about modifying a, a, a demolition agreement or a contract or something like that to work toward keeping the front wall of the building and working that into a new project. Um, it's gonna be some questions how that's gonna work out, whether when the building needs to, or the ground needs to be assessed and cleaned potentially uh, the other side of that coin is it's very difficult for the city to market and buy and find investors to build or to, in some cases, buy old historic buildings. So if somebody's interested in buying a, a lot that's vacant, it's going to add some cost to the project if they need to take the facade down after they buy it. So that poses another little bit of a challenge. Uh, the agreement with the state in terms of the money is that we have to hold the property for 10 years uh, in order to get the state emergency money. The, the MOA agreement was 15 years. Uh, we can work out marketing the property later as a land lease type of a thing later on, but that complicates things a little bit as well. So I think in terms of the MOA and your desires for the facade, you're talking about two different things primarily because SHPO doesn't consider the facade historic. And Millie, if I can add, uh, stipulation number three in the MOA, it, you, could, you could interpret that vague language about they're gonna redevelop it in a manner which is, can, enhances the character of the district. I think that's a pretty wide statement. So I think, um, I think we're covered there. I think we can talk to the city council or make motions to city council and attempt to leave things that are uh, enhancing the character. The one other um, piece I would also just add to that is I know that this MOA has been going back and forth between attorneys, um, and I am concerned that if we attempted to make additional edits to it, that that could <coughs> prolong um, the time period in which this, uh, the demolition of the building would take place because the EPA funds won't be released until the MOA is signed. So I am concerned that if we, if we try to add too much or, or do too much to the MOA itself, that that may actually have the um, exact opposite reaction that I, I know um, this council, or sorry, that this commission is, is hoping for. So I, I could offer a motion, Chris, and we can modify it, obviously, as it comes out of my mouth, but uh, it seems as if we are gonna be asking the city council to uh, uh, consider once the stucco is off that stone wall, we're going to ask them to consider a change order to have the contractor design a structural system to laterally support that wall, assuming that the vertical supports are adequate and they have been for a century or more, and to price the work to do what the structural engineer says to do before allowing demolition of that wall to uh, proceed. So we are, as a commission, we are going to ask the city to take that into consideration uh, outside of the MOA? Yes, that'd be, okay. my, that'd be my thought. Okay, and any other discussion? So I think first we should uh, uh, vote on the MOA and then uh, you can introduce uh, a motion um, to have this brought up before the city council uh, to price uh, doing that work in the event the, the you know the walls were saving I think okay. that's something we has been the question all along is it something behind there that uh, is still in in condition that's worth saving so uh, do we have a motion to, uh, uh, or any other discussion? I have, well, just sure. to drag this, I have one more discussion point. Sure. I don't understand what concurring party means. <coughs> I have no idea what, the, what that means. Concurring party means that the commission was consulted in the process, but 
the city was listed as a concurring partner as well, concurrent partner as well. Neither, only the signers of the contract can propose amendments, concurrent partners cannot. So you're, you're could you state that again? What does a concurring party mean? Means you're a, you're a consulted as a commission with Consult, the, with the consulted creation. Consulted on what, I guess, is what I'm asking. The creation of this MOU and discussion about demolition of the building. But well, you know, there are aspects of this contract that are, are, are uh, hard to accept. I'm, I'm trying to stay out of the city's business, but if we're going to accept this agreement, there's a lot of things in there that we may not agree with. So that's why I wanted to define when you say concurring party, what it is we're concurring with. This agreement, as it stands right now, that it was presented to you that you were consulted with this agreement and the demolition of the building. The city was also listed as concurrent, which meant the city had no ability to propose amendments. That, I requested that change and they agreed to it. So why do we need to concur with this agreement to allow this project to go forward? In reality, you probably don't. I mean, it's between the EPA and SHPO. SHPO is functioning through the CLG, which is the city. Um, so um, in reality, quite honestly, if, if this were to be contested down the road and there was no resolution to the contest, then EPA could still do what it wanted to do. I mean, our concurrence really doesn't matter. The contract's been signed. Is that, am I right on that? By? By the Shippo. signatory parties, and we don't need to have our not by the, Not by the EPA, not okay. by the city. Just Shippo. Once the three signatory parties sign this, it doesn't need the commission's signature to make it move ahead. Am I correct? As far as I understand it, um, I guess I would leave that up to Shippo to determine whether they would back out of it if... Okay. You wouldn't sign it. I don't know. I honestly well, that's, don't know. I guess know. that's one discussion point. I'm not the attorney. Is, uh, do we need to concur? Do we need to sign this agreement? It doesn't seem like we need to do anything. We, we, we've been consulted. We gave our advice. Um, I think things are moving ahead in a manner that we don't object to yet. I guess the question is, is that if we don't sign it, it goes back to the council, delays the process to find out if we do have to sign it, um, takes us out another month. Well, I guess just as a commission member, I object to the, the manner in which the EPA says this is, this is an agreement, take or to leave it. I just find that hard to accept. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, I guess um, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, we're, an independent commission, but still uh, a part of the city's administrative structure. And uh, I think that we do our best to make sure that we make our, our opinions known um, publicly to the city as a piece of their administrative structure. Uh, and so I think we need to keep that in mind. I think the other thing that we need to keep in mind is that um, we're, also, we're all, I think, looking for highest and best use. Uh, based on our our uh, motivations, and this motiv the this commission's motivation is, is historic preservation, especially where Main Street is concerned uh, in this process. So, uh, I think we, uh, I, and I'm not advocating um, either concurring or not concurring with with the agreement and with these statements. I just. I want to I want to say for the record that that I think that again highest and best use for our motivations and our motivations are historic preservation uh, and where Main Street is concerned and so um, I, I think making motions to uh, address our concerns to the city so the city commission or city council is fully informed on our opinion is important um, um, so where this agreement is concerned, I think the city also is uh, in the back seat trying to drive to, uh, and not terribly successfully, I guess, from uh, federal and state levels, right? Uh, so um, I think we're all doing our, our best, but uh, I think we would have been in a stronger position had we included more of Main Street in our own uh, survey so that we had a, a larger area uh, so I think lesson learned from this is that everything that occurs on Main Street needs to be under the umbrella of historic preservation where Main Street is concerned and should be on our future agendas for this commission and commissions uh, that come after us uh, because it gives us a stronger opinion and it gives us a stronger position in order to 
in order to have voices in this. Um, so that's, I guess, my statement. I don't know that it makes a difference either way, but that's what I'm thinking. Any other? Okay, anyone else have anything they'd like to add? <clears throat> um, uh, I, I was able to, to attend the uh, Stephen H. Hart Awards, and, and uh, they, they talked about Stephen H. Hart, who was uh, very instrumental in um, creating History Colorado, was, was on the initial board. And, and I, I, I took one quote that, that um, they, they quoted him with, and I, I think it aligns with how uh, we, we form this board and kind of what, what, how we want um, uh, to, to run this, this, this board. And, and it was, um, let me see if I can remember now. Uh, you, you don't have to take my advice, but you have to ask for it. And, and I feel like, you know, they, they're, they're at least asking for advice with this. And, and I think that's very important. Um, I don't really, I don't personally feel comfortable telling people what they can and can't do with their own per property, but with, with this board, we can at least give our advice, and we want people to continue to ask for it, and I, I feel like we're being included in this, and I think that's a good thing. Moving forward, do we want to approve this memorandum of understanding uh, as written? Um, do we not want to approve it? Uh, how do we want to move forward? I will entertain a motion if anyone has one. And you may want to include in there authorization for the chair's signature, if that's what the commission wants to do, I guess. I'll make a motion to approve this MOA as written and give authorization for the chair's signature. Do we have a second? I'll second. Roll call. Lauren? Uh, do we say yes or no, or how do we respond to this? Abstain, or yes or no? I'll vote no. Chris? Yes. Lester? Yes. Mike? Yes. Rich? Yes. Jim? Yes. Millie? Okay, yes. Okay, motion carries. And Laura and I want to thank you for bringing that up. I really do. I think you uh, have uh, been very instrumental in us, you know, not just looking over this is an old building that needs to come down, but let's take a really hard, and Mike as well, for going in there and getting those pictures. With that being said, I think we need to make, uh, entertain a motion uh, to have this brought before City Council and be discussed further in um, trying to take steps to preserve that front facade until we can see if it's worth saving. And the motion I have from Lauren's earlier comment, uh, which then we continued discussion without a second, but if the stucco removal reveals the wall is sound, uh, consider asking the city to add enough structure to preserve the uh, existing facade. Um, I can, <clears throat> sorry. Oh, sorry, I was just, um, just because of the sequencing and the timing of city council meetings and of when the wall may or may not come down, I would maybe suggest a, a friendly amendment to have that be brought before city council prior to um, it being revealed, but that the, um, that the funding or that the change order be contingent upon the, um, upon the removal finding that the wall is worth saving, if that makes sense, just so that you don't lose out on that crucial window of opportunity. Duly noted. So um, are we in discussion? Or Because we have a motion and, well, do we have to have a second? We have to have a second for discussion? Well, like that, I, that motion is exactly what I intended to say, so I, I, I would maybe pull that motion back if I can and we continue okay. discussion. How's that? Well, or do you want a motion for discussion? 
so that we can discuss it before we vote. Uh, I can do that if that makes more sense. It's the chair's call. Oh, yes, and we're still open for discussion. I don't think you made a formal motion yet. Okay. So let, let's talk about timing. Um, I, I, the wheels of the city move slowly, um, and this project is not one that's going to move slowly. And so I worry about the idea that we're going to consider asking them something versus saying this is what we intend for you to do. Uh, it's our opinion that, that it should be included from the very beginning before Bulldozer 1 shows up on site uh, because, um, you know, I don't know what, what scrape in the facade's going to look like. Um, and and it, it may go south really fast and there isn't any time to do anything and there certainly isn't time to get another emergency session together and so it, I mean this is this seems like a street side conversation that needs to happen quickly and I don't know how that happens quickly in in a governmental structure so um, I mean is there are there thoughts on how everyone can be standing in the street watching at the time and saying okay this is something that we now can do or this is not this we, there's not enough time to get an estimate together um can i come in on this you may uh, i was thinking a black and white um, motion to the city council might be a clear thing for them to just say yes or no to and, and the motion would be uh, please get a change order going with the contractor for engineering services to design the supports to keep that wall in place. And number two, uh, that change order would also include the price, the contractor's price to do that work. And they can't do that until the stucco comes off of that and we determine what we want to do. But I'd like to have the engineering services, they, they can probably get a pretty decent estimate and the price to do the work probably is going to be undefined until they find out what, what it is they're doing, obviously. Is there engineering work that's being ordered to um, deal with the adjacent buildings that has to be done once this is they, completed? The contractor has an engineering firm involved already. And they've already that done was, the engineering? They've done, the, they've done an assessment of what, need, what it needs to take down, but they haven't done engineering. They have to... They have to take wall floors down, walls down, and first the first step, from what I understand, is to clear out the machinery to get a good look at the wall. So then it needs to be. Are, are they going to support it before they take that down? I'm talking about the east wall. Yeah, I'm talking about the one I, I don't. To I don't. I don't know whether there's. I doubt that there's engineering involved with anything more than taking the stucco off. At I'm just point. thinking in terms of what happened over here next to the uh, atomic vapor with, you know, without having support in there when those floor beams yeah. come out and all of the other supporting structures that essentially keep that standing. It seems to me like there's going to have to be some kind of support work done in advance of. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the details on that. I was yeah, hoping Leo would be here, but he's, and, he's And not. I guess that was the direction of my comment earlier, and that is... Um, you start to strip off the facade and then everybody's got to sit back and wait and not do anything for a, a month minimum to, to even to even to shore the wall to yeah. take the rest of it down which they don't intend to do right now they don't intend in their plans they, they have a demolition plan that ensures the safety of everyone working in it and the, and the safety of the building and the surroundings Certainly, because that's what they do for a living, but not shoring the wall and keeping it. So if you suddenly said, hey, we want to shore this wall and keep it, minimum 30, probably 60 days before somebody's got a plan in, in place that's approved, where everything's got to stop because you can't pull out joists and, 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 and interior walls because it's going to be a wet noodle. So, that, I mean, that's, that's the pragmatic side of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's logical to say that they're going to have to take care of, they're going to have to be careful, I should say, with the front wall on the east and the west side simply because of the neighboring buildings. I don't know what that means. I have not been a part of any conversation about how they're going to take care of the, the front of the building to make sure those side buildings are protected. I don't know. That's really more of a, a Leo and contractor question than, than anything I can answer. So it seems to me but, the machinery is in place. You've got an engineer involved with two shaky walls on the east and west side and to add a third wall to their scope to 
or ask them to price a third wall to their scope wouldn't be much of a increase in services, I wouldn't think. It's just a, another wall they've got to probably use the same kind of details and thinking on. Well, we weren't anticipating $700,000 <laughs> project either, for that matter. So, I understand. You know, um, it's tough to say. And the timing, Lester's point is pretty, pretty um, on point, I think. I think the timing would be really difficult, and I'd, I don't know... I don't know how long this contract is, is held. I don't know how long the contract, I think the contractors were given like six months total to do it, I think. But I don't know for sure, you know, and how long would a review of structural review of building, rebuilding a wall basically, how long would that take? Um, I don't know, I really don't know. Do you know, know when do demolition is scheduled to start? As soon as it can, not until all of our I's are dotted and T's are crossed. And that part of that is contingent upon the MOA signatures, right? MOA signatures, um, signing of the um, emergency funding grant. Um, there was another, um, I still need to submit two EPA documents. One is an, an, an analysis of Brownfield um, cleanup alternatives, which is won't take long. Uh, there was one other one other thing that Ryan and I were talking about. I can't remember what it was, but it's probably out there at least a couple of weeks. And city council authorization of the MO as well. So Lester, to address your your concerns, <coughs> which are well uh, well founded, uh, I wonder if maybe uh, just a motion to pay the engineering services to support that front wall. That's not a huge cost relative to the construction work of it. And we would have a design in place and then when the stucco is peeled off, we can make an instant decision. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea or that's a bad idea. Well, I, I, think, um, I think your last uh, suggested motion, which was basically start the paperwork now, is a good motion because it gives something for the city to actively do right now before any, while everything that he just outlined gets done in terms of signatures and, and processing, that's another 30 days where somebody could be working on a change order. So I, I think you are correct in saying this is not without, that they're not without resources. So they're gonna say, hey engineers, this is coming down, give me a change order, a potential change order for engineering on keeping that wall. And let's start thinking about how we're going to take it apart if that changes our plans at all. So I think, I think your last motion, if we're going to do this, is a good motion because it gives somebody an immediate something to work on. And if May 6th is the next council meeting, then that could go before May 6th as a recommendation from this, from this commission. Uh, sort of a technical question for Mike. Uh, I think I recall from a previous meeting that you made a reference to uh, the need to uh, get the stucco off so that uh, it would be possible to see the connection to the east and west adjacent buildings. Uh, so without stucco removal, uh, it wouldn't really be likely that the engineer could come up with a, a cost for supporting the wall. Is, is that correct? Uh, the, the more information you have, the <coughs> the better cost you can provide. This, this whole project, it, it's, it's similar to um, a, a restoration historical preservation project. You're, uh, you're kind of going in with, with what you can see and the experience you have, and, and at the end of the day, you're kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall to see if it sticks. Um, you, you put money in there to cover yourself, um, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of that with this project. Um, uh, you know, they're basing this on their experience, uh, what they've seen on site. Um, there's lots of unknowns. Um, I, I think, uh, uh, it, in my opinion, a, a simple way to go about this would be um, if we could get the contractor to just, <coughs> what they know now, quote, what they would charge to leave that wall in place. and. You know, they, they have an engineer on board, and, and their engineer, I'm sure they have some plan at hand to how, how to treat and, and support the existing walls. Once they get in there, I'm, I'm sure that's going to evolve and change as, as, as time goes on. Um, 
I, I would think they would be able to put a price together. Obviously, if the stucco was off and they had more time and more information, their price is going to get smaller. Um, but just in order to have something in place for when the stucco comes off, um, I think if we could ask them to quote basically what would it cost um, to leave that wall there. And, and they're, they're going to have to come up with assumptions and, and plans and take risk on their own. Um, but then if once the stuck goes off, if, if it turns out that it, it is salvageable, um, at least there's a cost in place. Um, whether the, the city can afford that or not, um, at least there, there's something to move forward Okay, with. so Mike, you're advocating getting a change order for not only engineering services, but they're going to throw a number at a, a construction cost. Yeah, not, not necessarily a change order. Um, an estimate. An, an, an estimate. So um, we're asking only for an estimate from the contractor rather than make this an official change order. Right. For, for and, engineering and services and probable construction work. And so the, they, they would provide the estimate, and once they remove that stucco, right then can revisit, you know, is, is, is this feasible? And, and, and if it is, I, I, if, if it turns out it's real easy and maybe they're nice, maybe they'll, you know, cut their number down a little bit. Would it make um, sense to have the engineering done before the stucco comes off so that they know what it is they have to do and then tweak it be, there, based on what they find? I, I, I think in their estimate process, they would consult with their engineer and they would have some sort of basic plan, some okay. some idea in place, right. but but it's, you know, when, once you start pulling down floors and, and stuff like that, it's it's, you know, you're, you're kind of playing jazz. Yeah. Well, I, I like that idea. I don't know, but it seems that maybe we're ahead of ourselves. Um, you're assuming things not in evidence. This whole thing is exploratory because you don't know that wall may be in such awful shape that it's going to have to go and that there will be no shoring or um, bracing necessary. You don't know which way it's going to go yet. So this whole thing is exploratory. And um, I think that's a point, Millie, is to have something in place once we see it, that mm -hmm. it's very easy to make that uh, recommendation yeah. to hold off tearing it down until the city yeah. can say we Set can afford it or say that no we can't. Of an exploratory, uh, I think we've, uh, is there something else you'd like to add? Millie? No, I think that's okay. Rich, you have anything? No. <laughs> uh, any other discussion? Do we have a motion? If I can add one more comment, yes. and this, this is related to Mike's comment. Um, on an estimate versus a change order. A change order would imply that the money's available. And it's, okay. it's right now it's not. So I think in terms of it, the easiest thing would be to talk to the engineers, talk to the contractor and say, do you have an idea what it would cost to keep the wall there? There still would be engineering considerations for the parking lot because I, I don't believe the city would want to go through the alley because the alleys are going to be significantly different after the improvements to the 300 block are made. Uh, so supply trucks would be likely to park in the alley while they're dropping off materials, foods. Um, so whether, the, whether there would be space for cars, trucks to get in, considering current structural support, you know, how does the driveway fit in there? Will cars and trucks fit underneath what's there? That will still all, all have to be taken into consideration as well. So it's a little bit more than just the engineering firm saying, yeah, we can shore it up. We still have to be able to utilize it. As and I think of all of that can be discussed uh, at the time of whether or not the city or, or this commission feels it's worth saving. Uh, if this commission feels that it's worth saving, then we make our argument to the city and the city's ultimately gonna make the decision if they can afford to to tear it down or if they have other plans or input from other entities as to the best use of that property and we can argue that case uh, if and when it comes before us and the council. And the last consideration also is that the EPA needs to be able to get the drill rig in there and if they can't get it under the power lines that's going to be a problem. So I think that's all a discussion that could be had at the, the city council meeting about saving the wall, getting an estimate for it, and what do we have to do to, to immediately change the wall to handle traffic and drill rigs. And I think taking part of the wall down to allow access would certainly be better than taking the whole wall down and leaving it. So 
Um, <laughs> it would seem like someone from this commission probably ought to attend that May 6th meeting and present all this and discuss it with them. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than make a motion here, I, or maybe we make a motion to attend the meeting and have a discussion with the council. I don't know. I think we should make a motion and include what we want to be presented to the council uh, so that we have some documentation as to what we're asking for and what the general consensus is. So okay. do we have a, I have a five o'clock commitment, but do we have a, a uh, motion uh, as to what we want to do uh, and present to the city? Uh, I think we, we would like to go to the council meeting and present what we've discussed here, which would be uh, we're going to take all the stucco off, we're going to make an immediate decision. I guess the commission is probably going to make or make that recommended decision. We'll probably have to have some kind of input about how big of a hole we need to put in this wall to allow vehicles and drill rigs to get in there. And then ask the contractor to give us an estimate for the engineering and construction costs associated with that scenario. Should it happen? Is that your motion? Yes. Okay. Do we have a second? <laughs> I'm not sure what the motion is. I'm not even. <laughs> <laughs> I think can, can we shorten that up? Summarize that. Yeah. yeah the I'm motion sure is to attend or one of us to attend the city council meeting on the sixth, and present what we discussed here today, which is uh, trying to save that wall, or parts of that wall, to allow vehicle and drill rig access and to get an estimate, cost estimate from the contractor for engineering services and construction costs associated with saving that wall. Okay. The motion I've noted is uh, get a cost sure. estimate from the contractor for engineering services and construction needed to preserve the facade. And then we can discuss further the items that were brought up today. If, if there are issues with access or if there are other things that can all be addressed at a later time. But right now we want them to <coughs> put together some numbers to save the wall uh, long enough to determine whether or not it's worth preserving. Mm -hmm. So I think Jim, uh, one more time. Well, well <laughs> no, wait, wait a minute before Jim, before Jim. Okay. I know you got a five, but yes. um, are we, is the motion just to authorize the chair to, to present this position to the city council on the May 6th meeting? Is, it, is the motion that simple? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Would you like to amend that? Would you like to amend that? So, yeah, I, I w yes, I would like the, the motion, if Lauren will accept the amended portion, that this body uh, direct the chair to attend the May 6th meeting uh, with what's been discussed here in terms of options saving the front of the facade at that time. That sounds good. Sounds pretty simple. Ready? Second. <laughs> Roll call. I don't have a second. Yes, Mike. Second. Mike. Mike. Oh, okay. <laughs> he threw it in there pretty quick. <laughs> So Lester made the motion. I amended Lawrence, but okay. We co we co motioned. What I have is direct the chair to attend or was that commotion? city council meeting <laughs> to discuss options for facade preserve, preserve for preserving the facade. Yes. Okay. Mike seconded. Roll call. Lauren? Yes. Chris? Yes. Lester? Yes. Mike? Yes. Rich? Yes. Jim? Yes. Millie? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, we are running out of time. I don't know, can I leave the meeting early or is that an issue? I, I know we have a lot of things on there still, so. What's uh, We have to discuss the uh, guidelines for historic preservation. Oh my gosh. If, if you want, we can t table these to our next meeting. Okay, and I'm sorry. I've always if, got if a five o'clock commitment on That's up to you. <laughs> that's entirely up Wednesday. to you. Okay, so uh, is there something we want to address uh, briefly before I have to leave on the next three items on the agenda that we feel we might need to touch on today? We could um, move to announcements and 
I can give a committee report for the public outreach. Okay, let's do that, please. Um, let's do the outreach and uh, webinars and training opportunities. Thank you, Rick. We appreciate it. So a brief update for the committee outreach um, report. Our next event for um, outreach is going to be our window repair workshop that we're going to be hosting. Uh, one, the presenter is John Sargent with uh, Deep Roots Construction out of Fort Collins, I believe. Uh, registration is still going online. I recommend, um, if you're interested, um, to register through the city's uh, or the museum's website. If you have any questions or concerns about doing that, please contact the museum or myself. In regards to upcoming um, workshops and webinars, um, tomorrow the National Park Service is doing a webinar on the preservation brief number 16, the use of substitute materials on historic building exteriors. And you can register for that uh, through the CLG training portal. And that's noon tomorrow. And then the next one that the Colorado um, CLG training portal is going to be hosting is May 30th at 9 a.m. online. And it's going to be on certified local governments and Colorado Main Streets program. Uh, it's hosted by History Colorado and DOLA. And there's also registration for that on the CLG portal. The last one that they did for um, the CLG webinar on uh, April was defensible decision making and ethics for commission members. If you're interested, I have a link to that if you would like to view that. I can send that out to all the commission members. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Lisa. And I just want to uh, emphasize that if people are interested in the um, workshop that we have coming up here in May that you need to at least go on the website and register online for anybody who might be watching our program. Uh, we also talked about possibly uh, allowing some Yeah, we'll try to record it uh, as well, uh, at least a portion of it, and make that accessible uh, through our, the museum's YouTube account at a later date. Okay, so go online and, uh, and register for that if you'd like to attend. It just will help her out considerably. Uh, any uh, public comments before we adjourn? Aaron? And this is a little probably ahead of the game, but I just want everybody to think about the possibility of making 315 Main a new method plaza instead of a parking lot and having the clock tower plaza remain as a parking lot, um, especially if the facade can be saved. I think it would get a lot more pedestrian um, traffic uh, going to the, the vacant lot at uh, 316 Macon to Main Street. You wouldn't have a curb cut in Main Street. It wouldn't affect traffic flow on Main Street and we already have a parking lot. Um, there would be less vehicular traffic, less vibration for the building. So I'd just like us to think about that after we demolish it, not to hold anything up, but just have that in the back of your mind as a possibility. All right, appreciate that. Thanks. Amy? I have two quick things that I wanted to flag. I know that the issue of feather flags on Main Street and blade signs on Main Street have come before this commission previously. That conversation is still ongoing with the city um, becoming more interested in potentially pursuing blade signs. Um, I'll ask Lisa to add this as an agenda item for a future meeting, because I know that it was a briefly discussed previously, but I would certainly want um, the HPC to be able to weigh in on kind of what that might look like, blade signs being permanently affixed to the building um, and projecting outwards. 
as opposed to feather flags being the temporary in the ground. And then secondly, I just wanted to flag that the city did create a public art committee. Um, its first meeting was actually last night. And one of the things that they're interested in is bringing more art downtown, including revitalizing the sculptures on Main Street. But they're also interested in and discussing murals on Main Street and in the alleys behind Main Street. And I know that that would be a, a topic of particular interest for this body, um, given the historic nature of those buildings. So if the commission would like, I could also um, ask Lisa to add that to a, a future agenda, as a future agenda item. I would like that. Thank Any you. questions or comments? Anyone else in the public uh, like to add anything? Anyone else on the commission? I know you wanted to discuss changes are going on over at uh, the Robeson Mansion, but uh, perhaps we can bring that up in our next meeting. And I apologize for having to uh, leave. Anybody else uh, have anything else they'd like to add? All right, with that, uh, we'll adjourn until the next regular meeting on May 22nd at 4 p.m. And the uh, committee meetings are always at 3 p.m. an hour before, so if anyone wants to attend those. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.